Howdy, my friends. So great to talk to you. I'm so excited to talk to you this week about the Master Potter. You know, I've been reminded this week that we are all just lumps of clay in the Master Potter's hands. And that is really a safe place to be, right? It's a message that Paul really wanted us to understand. God is God and he created us for a purpose. And we find that when we find that purpose, it's gonna make all the difference in the world. However, a lot of us rebel against how God made us. Romans 9, 20 through 21, in the Passion Translation says this, who do you think you are to second guess God? How could a human being molded be how how could a human being molded out of clay say to the one who molded him, Why in the world did you make me this way? Or are you denying the right of the potter to make out of clay whatever he wants? Does it the potter? have the right to make from the same lump of clay an elegant vase or an ordinary pot. So, you know, God is telling us that no matter what we look like or what our gifts or talents are or what family we were born into or whether we are rich or poor, we all have to make a decision about whether or not we are going to follow God's will for our lives. So reading on in Romans 9, 22 through 24, Paul says, in the same way, even though God has the right to show his anger and his power, he is very patient with those on whom his anger falls who are destined for destruction. He does this to make the riches of his glory shine even brighter on those to whom he shows mercy, who were prepared in advance for glory. And we are among those he whom he selected, both from the Jews and from the Gentiles. So, on whom does God's anger fall? It falls on those who reject his son. This is why they are destined for destruction. They've made a choice. He is patient with them because he wants them to change their minds. And at the same time, he sees what they are doing and knowing what, what waits from the, for them when they continue. So who are those who were prepared in advance for glory. Those who are following Christ and living out what he has planned for them. Now, God selected them because they are the ones who are cho have chosen to be in Christ. It is the fact that we have made the right choice that makes God select us. As it says in Romans 9, 18, this is in the message, God has the first word. He initiates the action in which we play our part for the better or worse. And he puts things into action, but it's always how we respond that makes the difference and determines what's going to happen next. Problems come when we want something God never intended us to have or to be, or we refuse to take the steps that are going to lead to the destiny that God has for us, or we covet <laughs> that same destiny that we see someone else has and we want what they have. So, Here's another scripture. It says, shame on the one who argues with his creator. Like one clay pot 
among other pots arguing with the potter. Should the clay say to the potter, what in the world are you doing with me? <laughs> Your hands are clumsy. Shame on the, on the one who complains to a father. Why in the world did you conceive me or to a mother? Why in the world did you bring me to birth? Listen to what Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, the one who shaped him has to say. Why do you question me about the destiny of my children or tell me what to do with my children and what I have made? I created the earth and populated it with people. With my own hands, I spread out the cosmos and then commanded the starry host to shine. That's in Isaiah 45 and also in Isaiah 45, 22 through 23, God makes a promise. He says, so turn your heart to me, face me now and be saved wherever you are, even from the ends of the earth. For I alone am God, and there is no other. I make this solemn oath to you in my name. This word sent from my mouth in righteousness will not return unfulfilled. Truly, every knee will bow before me, and every tongue will solemnly share allegiance to me. Now, God sees us for what we will become. He also sees the ways that we have failed him, but he tells us time and time again that if we repent and turn to him, we will be saved because he alone is God. So our bodies are like dust and to dust, they will one day return, right? And this is why God uses the analogy of the clay and the potter. Our bodies are like the everyday common clay pots and dishes that were used in the biblical times, you know, for people to eat their meals on. The difference between us and these common utensils is God's presence lives inside of us, which makes us come alive. And it says in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, we are like common clay jars that carry this glorious treasure within so, so that this immeasurable power will be seen as God's and not ours. So the problem is that dishes get broken and so do we. Our dreams get dashed, people fail us, we fail ourselves. We do bad things that we can't undo and feel like, uh, you know, we're, we're just like the broken dish that we threw in the trash. You know, we feel like there's nothing good left in us. And if a broken dish needs to be thrown away, then what should be done with a broken person? Now, God, though, sees value in everything. He will use our brokenness to make something true to, truly beautiful with our lives. So I'm gonna, I, I have a show and tell today. Um, and if you, you won't of course see it if you're, if you're listening uh, on audio only, but if you go to uh, my YouTube video, or if you you happen to be in my coaching group and you see the uh, video, all of these videos are going into the Spirit-Led Transformation course. But last Christmas, my daughter gave me this gift, and I cherish it. I really do. She crafted it herself with much thought about what I would like. Because here's, here's what she did. She intentionally, she bought this bowl, it's a ceramic bowl, and then intentionally broke it and then mended it, similar to the Japanese art called kintsuki. I may not be saying that right, but kintsuki. It, this, this is an actual thing that they do in Japan because pottery used to get broken. They didn't want to throw it away. So they repaired it with a combination 
of gold dust and adhesive resin to make kind of a piece of art out of it, right? It's beautiful and I love it. So the cracks and the brokenness are not hidden, but they become highlights of, of an art piece like this, right? They become, you, that's what you see, you see the brokenness. And this is kind of what God does for us because we feel like we are beyond repair and beyond any usefulness to him. We think that he should just like toss us out with the trash. However, we don't realize that he doesn't look at us like we look at ourselves. What we see as broken, he sees as beautiful. Where we see failure, he sees opportunity for growth. And when we feel we have come to the end of our resources, he sees we have just begun to tap into his storehouse. What we see as something that is lacking worth, he sees as complete and of immeasurable value. Now, we can be ordinary cups and saucers and bowls. We can remain safe and secure without taking any ventures forward, not wanting to fall or do something wrong. We can take what we see as the safe path, or we can step out, jump off of that cliff of faith, and risk everything, including the possibility of becoming completely broken. We may become shattered in so many pieces that we can't even remember our original shape. When we do, it may bring us to the end of what we can do for ourselves and even what others can do for us. My friend, this is a good thing. We have finally come to the end of our resources. It is only then that like the prodigal son, we are ready to make the long trek home to the master potter. He takes what we think are ruined pieces, unusable parts, ruptured feelings, and begins to work his magic in us. He cleans our shattered edges. He mends our innermost parts and he washes clean our ruptured feelings. And then with genuineness of his touch, he seals the cracks to make an original piece of art like no other. And what was once an ordinary piece of dinnerware becomes a treasure for art galleries. The master, master potter knows he cannot use us when we won't embrace or even acknowledge our imperfections. We want to be perfect. And when he sees us, you know, we try to hide our flaws and our difficulties and our struggles. We stop them. We ignore them. We don't admit that they're even there even though they are only taking us deeper and deeper into desperation. The master potter, though, is the only one who sees us all the time and knows us completely. He knows us so well that he knows we need him. He knows we will be useless without his power energizing us. He tells us, never doubt my mighty power to work in you and accomplish everything you need. I will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. I will outdo them all for my miraculous power is what will constantly energize you when you submit to me. Now, those words are taken 
mostly from Ephesians 3.20 in the Passion Translation. Because only by, with, and through his power do we have the capability of becoming something beyond the scope of anything we could ever imagine. For instance, I never dreamed I could lose 250 pounds. I wanted to fit back into my wedding dress. That's, that's what I wanted. That was my dream. But I, I didn't calculate how much weight I'd have to lose in order to do that. It would have seemed impossible and I would have given it up. But I did finally do that back in 2013. The key for doing the impossible with God's help is simple. It's just always surrender, right? Proverbs 22, 4 in the Passion Translation says, laying our lives down in tender surrender before the Lord is the only thing that will bring life, prosperity, and honor as our reward. We have to allow the master potter to take over and begin to put our lives back together. Will it be easy? No, not gonna be easy. It's gonna be hard. It might even cause distress when we have to give up things that we crave. It will require us to commit to doing the hard things that he requires of us, but it will all be worth it because what he has in mind for our lives is beyond glorious. Surrender is simply yielding to the power of another who is greater. And when we realize we do not have the power to fix our wrongs and failures and brokenness, surrendering to the one with the strength to fix us is the only solution. Still, many choose to try to put their own pieces back together again. This never works because we don't have the right materials. We are not the master potter. He made us. He is the only one who can repair us. Oh, of course, we can try, and we may be able to fashion something that has, that will fill the cracks with alternative glues. Yeah, you know, those things like drugs, alcohol, food, sex, pornography, possessions, money, relationships, work, education, achievement, and so many others. It can be something that appears to be really good, but if we try to use it to fix ourselves without the master parter's intervention, the substitute glues we use to hold our lives together will soon dissolve and we will be broken again. And if we try to repair it again, we're gonna be broken again. Although it will require humility and repentance, we like the prodigal, bring the broken pieces of our lives to the master potter. We have no idea what will happen. Will he take the pieces and throw them in the trash? Will he turn his back on us? Will he refuse to speak to us? And yet, when we are still a long way off, the master potter sees us and with tears streaming down his face, he girds up his garment and begins running towards us, arms open wide with joy and sorrow all mixed together. He can't wait to embrace us. He gathers us in his arms and we feel his tears falling off our cheeks. At that point, no possession or status we have ever held matters. But when the broken return home, their pieces begin to long to be made whole again. So we gather all these pieces together and we humbly lay them down at his feet and say, I don't deserve for you to help me put these pieces back together 
and any semblance of what they once were or what they could be had I stayed in your presence. But I have nowhere else to go. I need restoration. I need mending. Only you can de do. Only you can give. I need the master's touch. And instead of berating us or being mad at us, he gently lifts our face to his and says, I am so glad you were here, my child. Now, celebrate your reconstruction. That begins now. And in the midst of the party, the master potter, potter begins to mix adhesive for our humanity, gold dust for his divine touch, and one drop of blood that seals any brokenness. One drop, my friend. And this celebration continues for days and weeks and months as we submit to the master potter's touch. We watch and learn where each piece is placed, why it is there and what its purpose is in our renewal. As we join in the process of restoration, we learn how we can become a vessel of use and purpose. More than that though, just being in his presence makes us new. We have a destiny. We have a beauty that has nothing to do with outward appearance and everything to do with the gold that is now an integral part of the true essence of us. And every day, as we look at the gold that has spilled our chipped, scratched, ripped, torn, shattered, and broken pieces, we are reminded of the patience and artistry of the one who took the time to resurrect us. At one time we were blind, but now we see. We are new creations. The old us is definitely gone. We have been made new in our thoughts and our feelings and intentions and even in the way we look. Who we once were has been crucified, broken, and revived under the watchful eyes of the master potter. We no longer live in the same way we once did. Now the essence of our new lives are no longer ours, but every piece, every restoration belongs to him. We are one with him. Our new lives are infused and empowered by the faith of the master potter who loves us so much that he gave himself for us and pours his life into ours. We have been enfolded into the master potter and we have become an entirely new person. All that was related to the old person who was us has vanished. I look and I see that everything about me has been made fresh and new. I have been revived. You have been restored. We are the broken beautiful. Nothing can take away our beauty when we have undergone his restoration process. We know the master potter has unbelievable things in store for us, for when we submitted to the process, we came out as his trophies of grace, mended, repaired, remade for kingdom use in a way that we never dreamed possible. God gives us a warning and a promise as, his, as our master potter. In Jeremiah 18, he tells Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house and watch what's happening. And while he's there, 
the potter was working on turning a jar on his wheel, but the jar didn't turn out to the potter's liking. He didn't throw the lump of clay away. He could have done that. Like he could have thrown us in the trash when we were broken. He didn't throw the lump of clay away and start over with a new piece. Instead, he crushed the piece that he was working on into a lump of clay again and started over. Oh, my friends, that's what he does with us. Exactly. God says in Jeremiah eighteen six, can I not do to you as this potter has done to his clay? As the clay at, at, is in the potter's hand, so you are in my hand. This verse was directed to the nation of Israel, but I really think it holds true for each of us us who have chosen to follow Christ. In the next few verses, God explains that he can uproot, tear down, and destroy a people. But if they renounce their evil ways, he will not destroy them. The same is true of a people that God has chosen to plant and build up. If that nation turns to evil and refuses to obey God, Jeremiah 18.10 says, I will not bless it as I said I would. In other words, God rescinds his blessing. You know, you know, the truth of the fact is that the nation of Israel did not turn back to God. All the way through the book of Jeremiah, time and time again, God warned the people to turn from what they were doing and they would not listen to God. They refused and they went in direct disobedience to what he told them. Jeremiah 18, 16 through 17, um, they told Jeremiah, we will not listen to your messages from the Lord. We will do whatever we want. Sound familiar? I know I've said it many times. You probably have too. But all they had to do and all we have to do is follow God. But they wanted their will more than God's will. God's will is sometimes a little bit more difficult to follow. But this is the warning that God gives us. Follow his will or we're not going to end up where we think we are, right? But the promise he gives us is that when we follow him, he will do great things in our lives. I really don't know why we rebel against what he wants for us, but I know I've done it many times in my life, so I'm not pointing fingers at you. I'm accepting my own um, issues in this too. But I also know this, all we have to do is listen to that still small voice that sometimes feels, feels like he is asking us to do the impossible. And that's because it's what he wants us to do. He wants us to do the impossible, but not by ourselves. He says in uh, Luke 1, 37, not one promise from God is empty of power. Nothing is impossible with God. So I just want to encourage you today that it is possible to follow God. It is possible to repent and to give it all to him and let him restore you and lead you and show you what to do next. It is possible. We can become the broken beautiful. We're all broken, but there is a next step into that process. So let's pray. Father God, we know you are the master potter. Only you can take the broken pieces of our lives, our flaws, our mistakes, our failures, and put us back together again, renewed, re-energized, and restored to the people you designed us to be. We trust you to do the impossible in our lives.
In Jesus' name we pray. Hey, just a reminder, don't forget Overcomers Academy doors are still open. If you want to join us, just go to TeresaShieldsParker.com backslash Overcomers. And if you have not ordered a copy of my new book, Sweet Surrender, Breaking Strongholds, the price has been lowered on Amazon for a short time only. So grab a copy. The link is on my website under the books tabs. It will also be down in the show notes. Um, hey, get a get a copy for a friend too, okay? Sweet grace for your journey.